Good morning. Good morning, church. Happy Resurrection Day. <laughs> Are you happy? And turn to your neighbor and tell them, He is risen. <laughs> he is risen. Yes, we have a cause to celebrate. We have a cause to rejoice because the Savior is risen. Today is a wonderful day that marks or reminds us uh, on the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Lord and our Savior, and we thank Him. We, we rejoice in Him. We now have hope because of that resurrection. And without much ado, I want, us to, I want to invite us to be able to, uh, to go to today's word. Today's program has changed a bit. So I want us to go directly to the sermon of the day so that we can share together and fellowship together in God's word. And then we will be able to continue uh, to continue with our worship experience. So I want us to turn to, to get, uh, turn with me to the, to the book of Exodus chapter 20. Uh, Exodus chapter 20 and we'll read verse 16. Exodus 20 and verse 16. And this is what the Bible says. Thou shall not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Shall we pray for the word? Our Lord and our Father, we thank you. We bless you for today. You have given us an opportunity once again to come into your amiable presence, to come and listen uh, uh, to you, to come and hear from you, Lord, to be edified, to be rebuked, and to be instructed in righteousness. So, God, I pray that you may use me as a vessel and an instrument of honor, even as I speak this word, that I will not speak anything that comes from me, but I will speak anything that comes from you, O oh God. I pray for my brothers and my sisters and the fellowship of Nairobi Chapel, Kiambu Road, and our visitors that are visiting with us for the first day today. I pray that you may speak to us and speak to our lives through today's words. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. We will be continuing with the sermon series that began uh, at the beginning of this year that our, uh, that our reverend uh, has been taking us through, uh, and that is the series on boundaries. And uh, our reverend has taken us through the first commandment to the eighth commandment. And now today we will be focusing on the ninth commandment. Uh, and that is uh, in, the, in the ten commandments that God gave. And that is do not bear false witness against uh, your neighbor. And today is a very special day for us to hear uh, this word uh, from the Lord. Because Jesus Christ is one of the victims that fell into the people that broke this commandment of bearing false witness against our neighbors. And I don't know if, um, uh, uh, if, if, if we are all aware, uh, but one day Jesus Christ, we all know Jesus did nothing wrong. In fact, Jesus Christ was sinless. He was perfect. Uh, in the 33 years that Jesus lived on this earth, he did not do any sin. He was perfect. And so it was required for a perfect person to die for the sinners. And so Jesus Christ being perfect, he didn't do anything wrong. But we all know that the Pharisees, the, 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 the religious leaders, uh, uh, captured Jesus. Of course, through Judas is carrying out. Uh, the one who came and carried out things that were, belonged to the, the 12 and then went and took the, uh, uh, the, the, the information to the Pharisees and the Sadd Sadducees. And, and, and then they came and captured Jesus. And since they had nothing to put on him, they hired false witnesses to come and testify against Jesus Christ. And you will see that in the book of Matthew 26 and verse 59. Now the chief priests and the elders and all the council sought false witnesses against Jesus so that they can put him to death. Because there was nothing that would stand, there was nothing legitimate that they would put before Jesus, that Jesus had done this or that. And so they had to hire false witnesses. And also somewhere else in Mark chapter 14, 56 to 59, we see that many people, it was not only one person, but many people bore false witness against Jesus Christ. They bore false witness now and then. And then as a result of that, Jesus Christ was crucified. And so that will be our focus for the day. Bearing false witness. And Jesus experienced just that. 
Once again, I want us to look at the purpose through which God gave us the Decalogue or the Ten Commandments. And of course, we've been told now and then by our reverend that the Ten Commandments were given by God so that they would help us as humanity to live in peace with one another. So that the Ten Commandments, they would help us live with one another and be able to accommodate one another and have good relationships one to another. And so when the Bible tells us, do not bear false witness against your neighbor, what does it mean? First of all, we start by defining who a witness is. A witness is someone who claims to have seen or heard or come to know a matter. And if you read Le uh, Leviticus chapter 5, when you read that, that text there, you will find the law on witnesses and on testifying, and especially on, on, um, on court. And they were told, any witness should be a person who either saw hard or they know a matter that they were coming to testify for. And so witnesses played a very important role in the Israelites' judicial system, much like our contemporary uh, judicial system today. Uh, uh, witnesses are very important, and they are very key. In fact, their words and testimony, they can lead to either vindication or condemnation of an individual. Sometimes someone's destiny is based on someone else's witness. And so... Anyone bearing false witness can either destroy a life of a person. And so, and think about it, especially when it comes to capital punishment. And then someone's testimony or someone's witness is the one that, that is left to be a determining factor on whether this guy is going to live or die. And so it's very important. And I guess that's the reason why Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21, uh, 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 that's part of what it means when it says that power and death eh, comes from the power. I mean, uh, death and life are in the power of our tongues. Because someone's witness can mean someone else's death. Then who is our neighbor then? Jesus expounded that on who our neighbor is in the parable of the Good Samaritan. And you can read Luke chapter 10, verse 25 through verse 37. And Jesus Christ demonstrated to every believer and every reader of the scripture that a neighbor should be every person that is close to you or every person in your life is your neighbor. And as a matter of fact, he went on to imply that everybody, regardless of who they are, where they are, their tribe, where they come from, they are your neighbor. So a neighbor is not just a person living next to you, your next door neighbor. A neighbor, as, as described by Jesus Christ in Luke, I mean, uh, uh, means anyone that is around you, anybody is your neighbor and should be your neighbor. And so when I was looking around what the meaning of this commandment is, I came across a, a, a document called Shorter Catechism, and I read question 77, and this is what that question asks. It asks, what is required in the ninth commandment? This commandment that we, 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 we are learning about today. And this is what the answer said, and I quote, The ninth commandment requireth the maintaining and promoting of truth, between a neighbor, a friend, uh, uh, I mean between a man to man, sorry, and our own neighbor's good's name, especially in witness bearing, end of quote. And so the ninth commandment required someone to promote the truth between one to another. So it's all about promoting the truth. And you might ask yourself, what does it mean to bear false witness against my neighbor? Bearing false witness involves testifying something that is not true against your neighbor. And we say your neighbor is anybody. And so against your friend, against your family, against your co-worker, against your family member, against your enemy, because your enemy is also supposed to be your neighbor. 
So when you bear false witness, when you promote falsehood, when you testify something that is not true upon somebody, you are bearing false witness. And bearing false witness can be destructive. Bearing false witness can be damaging. And we saw that bearing false witness can even cost someone's life. You can either bear false witness in public or even in private. And we'll be looking into that shortly. When we talk about bearing false witness in public, of course we have an idea. And some of us have borne false witness against someone else. And someone, some of us, yeah, I know, maybe at some point you, 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 you are where we are because someone bore false witness. Maybe you suffered consequences as a result of someone else bearing false witness against you. But in public, it can happen when you as a person, you accept bribe in order to help or to facilitate someone's employment through unfair means. So when you take a bribe to help someone get a job, that is bearing false witness. It can also happen when you, when you take the bribe, when you accept a bribe in order for you to hide something, to hide a matter. You know someone has done something, but someone anakuambia ni aje, shika izi za macho, shika za macho, wacha, uskwe mtiaji, and then you, you don't say. That can be false witness. It can also happen when you get pressure from people to do something for the sake of their benefit. That is also bearing false witness, and especially when falsehood is involved. You can bear false witness when you lie, even for good reasons. I know sometimes we say there is the so-called white lie. Right? We'll be looking into that shortly. But even when you lie for good reasons and for righteous reasons, righteous in quotes, that is also bearing false witness. One day in my life, in my journey of ministry, I came across such. One of the seniors that I had in my, in my, in my, in my, in my journey of ministry, who was a senior pastor, and we were in board meeting. And he came and he bared false witness against me. Yani usheo na mtu anaongea uongo kama amekuangalia kwa macho hivi. Like he looks at you in the eyes and he's telling lies. He knows he's telling lies. God knows he's telling lies and the devil knows that he's telling lies. And he testified against me. Ali danganyana. And I, 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 I actually cried. Because he's a person I trusted. He's a person I respected a lot. I was looking up to that guy. I was his junior. But here in front of the board, Ali Danganyang, Ali Danganyana at yo, Mchungaji, I'm a cooler person, I'm a metumia person, I'm a Kanisa Vibaya. And everyone was looking at me. But glory to Jesus, before the end of that meeting, I was vindicated because the truth came out. One of the leaders, Ali Kuja Kasema, Ali Kuja Kama Mechelo Kasema, ah, ni mimi, ni mimi, ni mimi. I can explain how he used the money without communicating to the rest of the leadership. I was vindicated. So I was a victim of false witness. Someone testified falsely against me. And it's something that hurt me. It's something that changed my perspective on, 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 on service. It's something that really bruised me. I'm still recovering even today. That's a long time ago. And so, bearing false witness, it's not just something you say and go. It's something that can cause implications that can be permanent in someone's life. You might ask, how can I bear false witness in public? You can do that. Actually, some of us are culprits here. Some of us even did it this morning. In the social media. When you come and you reshare and you repost and you kind of support someone's testimony that is not uh, 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 that that is not like proven, it's not based on fact, and then you reshare and repost and doing that, what are you doing? You're kind of propagating uh, propagating false witness against someone. And trust me, the more you share, someone is getting offended on that. 
Some of us, they like. Some of us, we are the one who shares things, propaganda, rumors that are spreading about certain individuals. And especially when it comes to an individual that you don't like. In fact, you reshare and you repost. Kwa groups zote. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, zile zingine zinaitwa maybe my friend there can help me with majina hizo zingine. That's all I know. Eh? Lakini kuna, you share to all of your social platform. But you know what? It's not based on fact. It's a rumors. And that, if that thing is wrong, then you are bearing false witness. Because you are amplifying it. You can bear false witness through the social media. And some of us, they do that every day, knowingly and unknowingly. You know, when it comes to social media, this is something that is very critical and crucial. Maybe some of us have heard of people who've committed suicide as a result of social media or cyberbullying. And it happens in the social media. Because maybe something came about and then it went and, and, and destroyed completely their names. And it's not based on fact. In the world, in the online world, accusation frequently results in immediate conviction. Just because something in the social, in the social media has been posted, that guy is condemned. He's guilty. Because there was no uh, interrogation done. There was no like uh, facts laid down. You don't have to go through the, the traditional judicial system. And so this is something that is really costing a lot in the community today. Especially in the social media. When you accuse anybody and post it online, it's, if it is not based on fact, if it is not true, you're also bearing false witness. The one who sees that and reshare it or repost it is also bearing false witness. And this is exactly what God is telling us not to do. How can we bear false witness in private? This happened when you spread false rumors. Hey, Niaji, uh, let me tell you something, but don't tell any. This is between me and you, okay? Uh, I, saw, I saw Nani, and, and Nani did this, uh, 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 and, and Mimi Nashuk, ni kama ye, alifanya, alifanya ni. You just, based on feeling, and then you start spreading rumors against someone. Eh? And then you use the slogan, this is between me and, and you. That is bearing false witness. And this happens especially if you don't like someone. Kama upendi mtu. Usikia tu sifa yake mbaya. Ay, ay, ay. Kujeni, kujeni, kujeni. Sikia ni, sikia ni. What's happening here? And you want to spread it. You want as many people to know about that person as possible. You don't even care whether it's true or false. Even politicians. I'm guilty. I'm, I'm one of the guilty people when it comes to that. Because I, I don't investigate whether a matter is true or false. Because I don't like someone or someone's stand. If anything comes up, based on the character, but that is bearing false witness. And guys, we have to realize that this can cause life. It destroys lives. It destroys families. It destroys reputation. It destroys esteem. It destroys careers. It destroys someone completely. It can go to an extent of even costing someone's life. I mean, you've heard of countless cases of people who are jailed and imprisoned, even for life, for things they did not commit. I saw a story in, in, in Netflix of a guy who was jailed, and he was innocent. He was innocent, but he was jailed for life, and he stayed in prison for 40 years. That's when the guy who did that went, and the by the way, After 40 years in prison, because someone testified, bear false witness. Against him. The Bible says this. Bearing false witness is lying. That's the bottom line. When you bear false witness, you are lying. 
And the Bible says in the book of Proverbs 12, verse 22, lying lips have been termed as an abomination to the Lord. And Amplified Version puts it this way, that lying lips are extremely disgusting to the Lord. The Swahili translation of that verse is saying that kudanganya ni chukizo kwa mungu. Ni chukizo when you lie to the Lord. And that's the scripture. And so when we involve ourselves in lying, we are involving, I mean, we, 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 we are detesting God. And God hates liars. And to emphasize the seriousness of lying, the apostle John, the beloved disciple, wrote in Revelation 21 verse 8, and this is what I, uh, he said, but fearful and unbelieving and abominable and murderers and holmongers and sorcerers and adilata and adal, adai, <laughs> adolaters, sorry, <laughs> adolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake that burneth with fire and brimstone. That is the lake of fire. And that is what is referred to the second death. All liars. This is serious, guys. I mean, be honest to yourself. I don't want you to raise your hand. But when did you lie last? Some of us have just lied here when I'm preaching. Mutu wa mekutekstu ka mudanganya. stage. But to emphasize the seriousness, the Bible says, all liar, water. So that means a liar who's lying in court and a liar who's lying through a phone call. They are all, they are all a liar who's lying to get money and a liar who's lying to, to just have fun. They are all liars. I leave it to you. Read this verse and look at the seriousness of lies. I mentioned about white lies. And some of us, they come and justify and say, hey, but Parsi, if, if I lie to, to help somebody, if I lie to support somebody, if I lie to support a certain cause, a good cause, if I lie to protect people, is in that kind of good? Is, is that true, by the way? White lies ni zile zile uongo zenye unadanganya for good reasons. Is that true? Is it is it a good thing? Absolutely not. White lies are also lies and they are included in the all lies that we mentioned in Revelation 21. It's a lie. 99 or 0.000001% of lies is it a lie? Just like 99.99999% of sin is still a sin. So it's important to note the, the emphasis of the emphasis and the importance of lies. So it's important to always know that. And white lies is, is prohibited in the scripture. Lies are not necessary. As Ephesians 4.15 has indicated, indicated. Instead, we are supposed to prioritize, and especially when sensitive matters are involved, we are supposed to prioritize honesty. The Bible says, speak truth in love. Be honest. Do not lie for the sake of protecting people. Be kind. Be cautious in the way you communicate the truth. Be cautious. So it's always important to realize that. And glory to Jesus, because I know all of us here are culprits of lying and bearing false witness. Glory to Jesus because of the occasion we are celebrating today. Jesus died and rose again in order to take away our sins. We were condemned already. That's what the Bible says. We were condemned already. And the Bible says all have seen and fallen short of the glory of God. But glory to Jesus. Jesus took your place. Jesus took my place. He died in order for us to be restored back to the fellowship of God. And he tells us, come to me. He tells us, ask and it shall be given. 
He tells us, whosoever shall repent, God will forgive them. Who shall ever, whosoever shall confess their sin before the Lord, God is just and he shall forgive them. And by the way, bearing false witness also means hiring someone to lie on your behalf. Wale wanatumianga watoto kusema kusema ati endo ambie daddy this and this and this and this and this endo ambie mami this and this and you are lying you are also bearing false witness you are guilty even if you don't do the, uh, the 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 exact thing you are guilty but glory to Jesus Christ has made it possible for us speak the truth of God in love speak it in love and God will continue to help us. And when we do this, we will live in peace and harmony with one another. When we speak the love of God in love, God will be glorified through your life. God is a God of truth. And that's the beauty. We follow that God who is a God of truth. Shall we pray? Our Lord and our Father, we thank you. We thank you because, Lord, you've reminded us that falsehood originated from Satan, and he's the father of it. And we are not children of darkness, we are children of the light. That we are supposed to walk in light and speaking the truth one to another in love. Would you give us that wisdom? to be able to live in truth and to demonstrate truth in our life so that your name may continue to be glorified in us because we are the children of, his, of light and we are supposed to reflect the light of God in our life. So anyone here struggling with falsehood, I pray and I ask for your goodness. I ask for your power. I ask for your mercy. I ask for your wisdom. And I ask for the ability to be able to deal with the falsehood in their lives. And instead, God, teach them how to communicate the truth and to speak the truth always. So help us, Lord, even as we continue with today's service, Lord, that we will meditate on these words and be changed by the power that comes from it. In the name of Jesus Christ. So we pray believing in Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you.